Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, we are going to do part three of the solar atmosphere effect in HitFilm Express version 12, which is based on the recreating the video co-pilot star in HitFilm from Axel Wilkinson and Simon Jones, which is originally based on the solar atmosphere tutorial by Andrew Kramer and Video Copilot. So we have created the base of the star and we have created the solar flares that are coming off the star. If you have not watched either parts one or part two, you will probably want to do that first. So that way you can continue to follow along here in part three. In part three, we're going to go ahead and color this. We're going to add the camera moves. We're going to add some heat distortion look to it, some lens dirt. Uh, and we're going to add the light flares and just sort of tie it all together. We're going to start by coloring it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my original project file and I'm going to add a gray layer on top. And if I hit my F2 key, I can rename this color. And I'm just going to search in the effects panel for the gamma effect and drag that onto the color grade. And if I open this up, I can adjust the red, green, and blue gamma channels. I'm going to adjust the red gamma channel to be 2, the green gamma channel to be 0.5, and the blue gamma channel to be 0.1, which is as low as that goes. And so now we have this beautiful, bright orange look to it. And that's it. As far as coloring goes, we're going to do a little more coloring here of the the background, things like that. But first, let's go ahead and add the camera move. Here is the camera, and what I'm going to do is just go to where I want the camera to end, about seven seconds in maybe. I will, uh, you know, this is about where it's going to be. So I'm going to open this up, and under the Transform Properties, I'm just going to keyframe X, Y, and Z rotations. If I highlight all three of those keyframes, I can adjust them to smooth in. And then I'll go back to the beginning and all I have to do is just adjust the rotation property here and we'll just sort of maybe go to about there so now it's just going to sort of move in uh, and that looks good and since I'm not actually adjusting the position or anything like that uh, it will be pretty pretty basic camera move but notice that the solar flares don't you know they're not there and then they sort of appear there that's because the solar flares themselves the emissions maps all five of them are not three-dimensional planes so i'm just going to highlight all five of them and then make them into 3d planes so now you'll see that those will follow the star all the way from the beginning until the, the end of the camera move. And that's exactly what I want right there. So now that I've done that, you can see that the stars, uh, the background is not here. We created a background plane way back in the beginning of uh, this in part one, almost the very first thing we did. And then we haven't done anything with it since. So I'm going to go ahead and search for the fractal noise effect. And I'm going to drag that fractal noise onto the background plane. And if I open up, I can go ahead and use the preset of star field. Okay. Now, as the camera moves, the star field is not moving. So that we want to fix. Okay. And there's a couple of ways to do that. One way, the normal, the way I would do it is I would add a 360 degree video viewer effect and then make some adjustments there. And that would automatically update. But you know what? Since the camera is just pivoting, um, there's another way to do it. And I thought I would do it a little bit differently. What I'm going to do is open up the transform property of this fractal noise and just under position, use the control point. So now as the camera moves in relationship to the control point, this fractal noise will move as well. And that makes it real super simple and real easy to do so now we have the background of the stars you know i want to tint that a little bit because this is a bright sun here and so what i'm going to do is just add a fill color effect to that background plane and if i open it up 
I can maybe search for something like a very, very dark red. Uh, and then I'll just take that way down, just barely. You can see I'm just getting a little bit of a red tint there, maybe 8 or 10% worth, just enough so that it looks like it sort of ties together like that. And I'm, I think that's pretty much good. Uh, there you go. Let's add our heat distortion, shall we? If I were to add a new grade layer and bring this down to above the star map, and I'm just going to call this heat, and then I search. Now, the way that uh, Axel did this was he used a displacement effect, and then he used a fractal noise, and it was pretty complicated. The good news is, is that HitFilm Express version 12 has a built-in heat distortion effect so this makes our life real easy we just drag this on there and there it is right now we have this beautiful heat distortion and you can of course adjust that you know the the properties of the heat distortion here um and everything like that i'm just gonna leave it as the base though i think it looks pretty good i think the only downside here is is that it's distorting everything, even the stars, background, and all that kind of stuff. And really, you'd only want to distort here where the sun is. So we're going to create a mat that we're going to use on that. And I'm just going to use one of the glow layers. I think probably glow plane, maybe three. And I'm just going to right-click on that and duplicate it. And now it's glow plane four, but it's exactly the same. I'm going to drag that below my background picture. And if I open up a new layer and say a grade layer and drag that down to above that, and then I can just rename that grade layer the heat mat, as it were. And I want you to notice that if I were to just sort of turn off, say, all of these things except for that, then what you'll get is this, this bright area here right that's basically where the heat distortion needs to be all right so i'm going to use that as my mat so if i go back to the heat grade opening that back up and i say mask using the heat mat then this is no longer heated right but this still is and so now i have this very nice heat distortion that is happening right here around the star itself, but not anywhere else, right? Only around the star. And I think that looks great. I don't think I have to do much more than that. I'm pretty happy with it. So let's move on. And we're going to add some lens dirt to this. Now, it's actually really nice because HitFilm has a lens dirt effect. The downside or the bad news is, is that it's an add-on and you have to pay for that. So Instead, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use a lens dirt from ProductionCrate.com. ProductionCrate.com is a great place to get free and paid for stock footage. And I have an affiliate link with them and it's in the description below. If you wouldn't mind doing me a favor, go down there, click on that affiliate link and create a, yourself a free account with Production Crate. You do that, you'll have access to all kinds of free assets. And then if you ever upgrade, it really helps out my channel. You can always upgrade. It's a wonderful, awesome site. So this whole video is really brought to you by the Production Crate uh, guys, and they are fantastic. I'm going to go to the search bar and I'm going to search for a uh, dirty lens and we'll just find one. We'll just use number 17, the first one that comes up. I click on that and you can see there it basically there it is. And if I look here, you can, if you have a, a pro account, in other words, you've, you've uh, bought a year's worth of this, then you can download the really super high quality one. And then here's a lower quality one, 720 by 404. Just for today's video, I'm going to go ahead and use that one. I happen to have a pro account, so I could actually use this. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and download this one and then bring it into HitFilm. So here it is, and I brought it into HitFilm. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this underneath the heat grade, actually above the heat grade, and that's it right there. Let me go to the end of my timeline. And I'm just going to change, right-click and change the blend mode to be a screen blend mode. 
And I'm going to make this a 3D layer so that it's big enough, you know, so that it moves as my camera moves. That'll be important. Uh, also, I'm going to, under the Controls tab, Layer Properties, I want to align this so that it's pointing towards the active camera. So it's always going to be pointing towards us, right? And now if I go to the beginning here, I'm just going to... Under Transform Properties, scale this up until it's big enough to cover everything, okay? And now you can see that it's there. It's too much, obviously. We don't want quite that much of a lens flare. So I'm just going to take the opacity down until it's very, very subtle. I mean, it's, it's barely visible at all, but it is there. And so it just feels like we have a little bit of a dirty lens uh, you know, that we're looking at this adds a little bit of a real feel to it. Uh, and it's a small thing, but it's a nice little touch, uh, you know, that, that adds a little bit more realism to the shot here. All right. Uh, last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a light flare to this. So again, oh, let me rename uh, this lens dirt, by the way, just to keep everything nice and clean. All right, now I'm going to go into my media bin and under my planes folder, I'm going to find a black plane and drag this in. We'll bring this below the lens dirt here. Uh, maybe even below the, nah, below the heat distortion. And I'm just going to right click on it, blend mode of add. And then I'm going to search for a light flare effect. And that light flare I will bring in and drop right here. I'm going to rename that plane to be light flare so that, again, I know what I have and I know what is listed where. And you can see that that light flare is basically just sitting there. We don't want that. So I'm going to open this up under hotspot position. We're going to go ahead and zero out the center properties. And under the use layer, I'm going to... Uh, basically assign it to the control point. So you can see there it is. Now I don't want it visible. So what I'm going to do is just take the scale down to zero, but I do want the lens flare itself and you can see it, but I'm going to change that instead of being um, a 105 prime, I'm going to use a chromatic arc. Oh yeah, there it is. And you can see that chromatic arc. That looks pretty cool. I'm just going to drag the arc over so that it's sort of about there and then as the as it sort of moves it's going to arc across the screen it's a little bit strong i think i want to blur that out a little bit so i'm just going to add a blur effect to it and drop it on there and oh my goodness doesn't that look great yeah and i can adjust the blur on that uh, maybe just a little bit more subtle yeah, I like that. Okay. So now I have this, you know, nice little lens flare that sort of comes across. Again, it's just for adding a little bit of a touch. And pretty much that's it in a nutshell. So if you have any questions about how to do this, please feel free to drop them in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching.